Welcome to the Sent from Disneyland podcast. Here age relives fond memories of the past. If it's your first time joining us, welcome. On this podcast, we'll take a journey into the past and explore Disneyland and Disneyland history with mementos, snapshots, and postcards sent from Disneyland from 1955 to the present. The postcards from this episode will be viewable on Instagram at Sent from Disneyland or on my website, sentfromdisneyland.com. Today I'm starting off by thanking my patrons from patreon.com. You can join in and receive mail from my desk or for my trips to Disneyland. I'm currently working on some new patron benefits. Patrons can sign up for as little as a dollar per month. Special thanks to Random Olive, the first patron to this podcast, and to the e-ticket patrons to Nia, Eric Daniels, Monica Seats Vega, Scott Booker, Russ Romano, Michael and Christina Cross, Scott Cagle, Mary Henderson, and Sheila Harry. See ticket patrons, series inquiries only, Debbie Weinstein, Jennifer Schneep, Grace Coat, Ben and Noel Bruning, and Patty Wool. B ticket patrons, the Disney Rewind Podcast, and Jeff and Paige Orton. And to the A ticket patrons, Elise Sharp, Zealot Infinity, Alexis Robles, Maggie and Henry Byers, Angelique and the Block, and the All Aboard Podcast. I am your host, your post host, Clocky. And today, we have two postcards sent from Disneyland. The front of our first postcard has Pluto standing in front of the Matterhorn with his arms up. At the top it reads, Pluto at, and on the bottom it reads, Disneyland in red letters. On the back it reads, Have you seen Mickey? Pluto lopes about in search of his lifelong companion Mickey Mouse and Goofy. Here is truly a hilarious trio for guests to meet in Disneyland, home of Walt Disney's most beloved characters. It's postmarked April 19, 1978 with an Anaheim cancel and a nine-cent right of people peacefully to assemble Capitol Dome postage stamp, Scott number 1591. I assumed to visit the park on Monday, April 17th, and Tuesday, April 18th, when park hours were from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. both days. The weather was a high of 71 and a low of 47 on Monday, and a high of 78 and a low of 51 on Tuesday. It's addressed to a Conrad Honick of Rochester, New York. It reads, Hi, what's up? Yesterday and Monday we went to Disneyland. I got sunburned on my face and arms. Today we leave for San Diego. On Friday we're going to Mexico for the day. I'd best be on my way. Your friend always, Jenny. Since I attended a performance of Disney on Ice this weekend, I thought it would be interesting to see the history of Disney ice skating productions. Disney has a storied history with two major ice show companies. But the Disney company has never produced its own tours. The origins of the ice skating shows start with two companies, the Ice Follies and the Ice Capades. Both shows included a variety of choreographed routines from solo performances to music, to comic routines, to large production numbers. This led to the Ice Follies contacting Disney to add a Disney character to the show. The first character to appear in the Ice Follies was Pluto in 1946. The Pluto costume was based on previous comic routines, with two skaters forming the front and back of the animal, previously done with horses and cows. After the success with the Pluto skating routine, Dumbo was added in 1947, followed by Ferdinand the Bull in 1948. The Ferdinand routine included a staged bullfight on the ice. The second company, the Ice Capades, approached Disney to add a 30-minute segment to their upcoming 1948-1949 season, based on the animated movie Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Until then, ice shows relied on having individual performance segments. This would allow for a full story to be told during the show. The Snow White show was included as the Disney feature, while the rest of the show was non-Disney-centric. After retelling the Snow White story for a few years, the Ice Capades wrote a new story for the 1950s tour, which included Mickey Mouse, Donald, Minnie, and other Disney characters. Following that, they wrote a 30-minute version of Cinderella for the 1952 tour. One of the more famous stories about the Ice Capades happened in July of 1955. Walt Disney needed costume characters for the opening day of Disneyland, and turned to the Ice Capades for assistance. Luckily, the show was down and wasn't traveling or performing during the summer, so most of the character costumes you see in the opening day footage were designed and made by the Ice Capades crew. In turn, the Ice Capades had a new show debuting in 1956 based around a Disneyland theme. The partnership with the Ice Capades ended after 15 years when the original owner, John Harris, sold the company to Metro Media, who did not want to renew the Disney contract, and instead worked with Hanna-Barbera on an ice show that opened in 1967. 
Although I enjoy Enfield Post to look at postage, I also enjoy her Instagram for helpful information about postage. Recently, she posted about how much it will cost to mail a wedding invitation. The information about the cost for sending a wax seal or an oddly shaped envelope was very helpful. You can head over to EnfieldPost.com and explore all the different vintage stamps you can use on your next card or letter. That's E-N-F-I-E-L-D-P-O-S-T on Instagram and EnfieldPost.com for your wedding and vintage postage needs. Enfield Post is the official postage stamp sponsor of the Sent from Disneyland podcast. The front of our next postcard has Walt Disney standing next to Mickey Mouse. Behind him is a row of characters, and the very back, Sleeping Beauty Castle. On the back it reads, It all started with the mouse. Sleeping Beauty's castle towers above a colorful array of characters from the world of make-believe, led by Walt Disney and his first and foremost star, Mickey Mouse. It's postmarked July 19, 1971, with a Chula Vista cancel and a six-cent Eisenhower postage stamp, Scott number 1393. I assume they visit the park on Friday, July 16th, and Saturday, July 17th, the 16th anniversary of the opening of Disneyland, when park hours were from 8 a.m. to 1 a.m. The weather was a high of 80 and a low of 62 on Friday, and a high of 83 and a low of 65 on Saturday. It's addressed to a Mr. and Mrs. F. Lovenfossey of Pine Beach, New Jersey. It reads, 7 1871 Hi. Disneyland was every bit as nice as I remembered. We spent two days there and had a ball. We also went to Knott's Berry Farm and to Universal Studios. Connie and I are both very tired and anxious to get home. See you soon, Madeline. Disney attempted to get back into the touring show business and opened Disney on Parade in 1969 in Chicago. The show had no ice skaters but did have over 100 Disney characters. The start was rocky, but by 1976, there were four different companies traveling the world. I have a program from one of the 1970s productions and was fortunate enough to work with one of the original performers. I asked him to sign the program, and he pointed out each character he had played and understudied. The Disneyland on Parade production had its final tour in the mid-70s. In 1980, Feld Entertainment contacted Disney about adding a half-hour segment in their recently acquired Ice Follies, the first ice show that Disney ever had a contract with. Initially, Disney declined. Then Feld Entertainment came back with a proposition to have an entire ice show centered around the Disney characters. Feld Entertainment would produce a show called Walt Disney Productions' World on Ice. Diane Disney Miller attended opening night on July 14, 1981. In the early years, the company also hired Olympic figure skaters to headline the productions. In 1986, Happy Birthday Donald Duck toured Japan, starting the international tours of the show. The Disney Animation Renaissance allowed for full productions focusing on single stories, including Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Pocahontas, Toy Story, and Hercules. The number of tours grew to eight productions touring the world. In 1997, the name changed to Disney on Ice and is still the largest employer of professional figure skaters. The one constant character featured in every show is Mickey Mouse. This incoming postcard is sponsored by the Art Throwdown. Art Throwdown, or ATD, is an online craft hour on Instagram, starting at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific. Be sure to check out Monday's ATD, which is usually hosted by a paper artist, Russ Romano. I see many amazing art projects, learned about awesome postmarks, postage stamp history, and a lot more on different episodes. It's great to stop in for an hour to watch someone craft or design something unique. Each host brings something a little different to each show. I'll list some of the regular hosts, or you can follow Russ Romano 2021 on Instagram. The front of my incoming postcard is a black and white photo of a pumpkin wearing a pointy witch hat and has a menacing face. Below the pumpkin is written, Happy Halloween. It's not postmarked, but has a round barn forever postcard postage stamp, Scott number 5546. It reads, Pumpkins are orange, goblins are green. Have a very spooky and happy Halloween, Scott. Thank you so much for the postcard, Scott. As you can tell, I'm a little behind with my mail this month as my work travel has been exhausting. As I mentioned earlier, I was fortunate to catch one of the newer Disney on Ice tours as it came to my hometown. My favorite part was seeing Maximus, the horse from Tangled, and Sven, the reindeer from Frozen. 
Both were two-person costumes similar to the Pluto, Dumbo, and Ferdinand costumes from the Ice Follies back in the 1940s. It was great to see a tradition held on for 80 years. Thanks for listening to Sent from Disneyland. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and tell your friends. It would be awesome to share your favorite episode. There are over 100 episodes to choose from. It would also help to leave a five-star rating and comment on whatever podcast platform you use. If you'd like to support the show financially, please check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash sentfromdisneyland. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at sentfromdisneyland or on Twitter at sentfromdisney. For questions and comments, send me a postcard addressed to sent from Disneyland, P.O. Box 44, Hood, California, 95639. This podcast is not affiliated with Disney, the United States Postal Service, or any post office or Disney properties. Opinions expressed on this podcast belong to its host and guest of the Sent from Disneyland podcast.